Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show. This week we are doing a dive into SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats with your personal wealth situation to help set you up with a platform that will fire you up for the year ahead. As always, make sure you take plenty of notes, but most importantly, take plenty of action. See you on the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show with me, your host, Andrew Baxter, and as always, my offsider and co-host, Mitchell Laurentiel. AB, we love breaking things down. That's exactly what we're about to do today. Specifically, drawing up the old card out of uni, the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. We're going to apply this to your finances, the SWOT finance. There we go, SWOT on finance. You normally associate that with someone that's a poindexter, but I think this is a, uh, a very important thing for people to look at as we go into the back end of the year. And I guess the reason why is that oftentimes when you do your goal reset, you know, it's usually New Year's resolutions or we've got the Wealth Accelerator program in January 15th to help people with that. But I think there's a little bit of rumination you need to do beforehand and really review the year and, and thinking about things, uh, you know, just, just passively thinking about things until you get to set your game plan up for the new year, not trying to jam it all together. That's right. So what do you got for us? Let's see what we're getting into. Well, just to premise this before we jump in, when we, we speak of a SWOT analysis, the best thing you can do is be totally as honest as possible with yourself because no one is weakness free. Everyone has weaknesses. There are threats which face everybody. So getting it all out the table means that you can fix it. So mm. let's start with some strengths then. What would fit into that category? I think starting at the top, I suppose it has to be skills. Um, you need to develop skills when it comes to the world of investing. I and mean, we just spent a whole book uh, detailing this in the Wealth Playbook uh, that you, you need to learn what this journey is all about because I guess the world of financial markets, there, there are a whole series of small things, uh, but those small things can be very, very important when you add them up and put them together. So certainly developing skills in the area you're at. So it might be if you're a property investor, understanding uh, demographic moves and shifts. It might be uh, understanding uh, the rules and regulations regarding subdividing land, uh, you know, uh, or, or putting a, a splitter. If you've bought a, a house that's on a big enough block, can you split that into two for townhouses? Just a simple example of where skills really sit in. If you're in the trading space, being able to read the chart or understanding what the fundamentals would be, all good examples of, uh, of skills which are very, very important to acquire if you want to have a level of success, if you want to have a level of success at what you're doing. That's right. You can even peel this back as well. And arguably one of our biggest strengths collectively would be the fact that we can budget. That's mm. a huge strength when it comes Look, to money. Budgeting is enormous uh, in so many different ways. In the first instance, it's ability to create free cash flow. So you spend less than you earn, you've got additional cash flow, which you may save, or you can deploy into other forms of investment. And this is a very difficult one for people, especially going into the back end of the year, and not just any year, but a year that we've been, I guess, um, besieged with interest rate hikes and an overall cost of living rise, making it far harder to create that surplus cash flow. And all the more reason why budgeting is so important in order to do that, to to be able to create the space and, and cash flow to have what you want in the future by saving it now. Speaking of which, having cash and or an emergency fund is is a critically important strength. If you've got an emergency fund, something happens, you've got the strength to be able to you know, fix it right there and then. Very, very important, especially in these uncertain times. And I suspect as we move into the year ahead, um, you know, we may see some fairly difficult times. I, I hate to be the prophet of doom, but some difficult times for the economy and, and, and job security may not be as resilient as what it has been for the last 15 years. And so that notion of having an emergency fund, which again, we cover adequately in the book, is that you can write out a month or up to three months where your income is turned off and you're able to keep your head above water and not, not really be going backwards financially uh, and living under the stress that comes alongside that. It also makes you feel better, to be honest. I mean, you, we all know what it's like when you've got cash in the bank, you feel more safe, for sure. You, you have to have cash and there are a lot of people out there that are, uh, are week to week or month to month where the paycheck goes. Um, and it's not fun. I've lived under those circumstances where you've literally got no money. You've got more weak than money, and it's very, very difficult psychologically. Um, and and it, it's very difficult from a quality of life perspective, but it can change. It requires a modification of behavior in some instances. And you might say, well, you know, I, 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 my job is what it is, in which case maybe opening the door to a side hustle which we'll talk about is, is something that's very, very important. And yet so many people are reluctant or resistant to doing that uh, to, to improve their cash flow situation. So cash at the bank and emergency fund is, is hugely important. I think also having any asset base. Totally. Um, yeah, I can't stress. And again, we, we talk about this in the book and we've, we've talked about this in, in, in several podcasts this year. 
and, and that is that getting your home, your first place, your primary place of residence, somewhere to live, you have to get in that game as quickly as is humanly possible. And it will result uh, in you being in the game and starting, but it'll also require um, some sacrifice. You've got to acquire a deposit, you've got to acquire saving habits to be able to service debt, and you've also got to accept the blow to the ego that you may not be in the beachfront apartment in Bondi as your first purchase. You might be quite a number of streets back uh, in something that has no view, but that's that's that's, that's where okay. the game starts as long as you get started. And in today's social media influenced world, it's very, very hard for people to accept that they can't necessarily have what everyone else seems to have. Maybe they don't have it. Maybe they just got a photograph of it. That's right. Absolutely. With all of this as well, if you've got a plan, you've got a huge strength because most people go into this stuff blind. If you've got some idea of what you're doing, you're already ahead of most people, right? I had this conversation this morning, uh, my barista um, at, uh, at the little cafe at home. And, and, and is just the most incredible person. She's a forward thinking person. She's very customer focused uh, and she's very engaging uh, to, to have a conversation with on, on, on a lot of different metrics. And we were talking about that very thing this morning. Uh, she said, oh, you know, you look really smart. I had a suit on this morning, which is quite rare. It's very unusual. Quite, um, you know, it's, it's, it's some corporate stuff on today. So I had to look the part, uh, get rid of the Birkins and the uh, and whatnot and, and get into it. And, and I said, look, well, going to the office today and talking about a few different things. And that started a conversation about goal setting. Uh, and she said, I could never do that. I said, why? Uh, and she said, well, I don't know. I just, I never have. I said, well, that's okay that you never have, but you, you've got to start. Uh, and it doesn't matter that you've never done something, but once you get started, you start to accumulate that muscle memory and, uh, and a skill set and a plan. And so, you know, sit down and have a think about what you actually want out of life. She said, well, I'm trying to do that because time's ticking. I said, but you've got to grasp that because time will always tick. And before you know it, and I, uh, you know, this time last year, you're probably thinking the same thing and you've 365 days down the line and you don't have that clarity. And she said, yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about it that way. Uh, you know, maybe you want to go be a tattoo artist and it's like look if, if, if that's what floats your boat and that's what you've got a passion do it in, do it because you'd be very good at it because your ability to engage someone and talk to them and, and, and make them leave here with a coffee in their hand or a sleeve uh, of tattoo if that's what you know, is a remarkable skill to have so you need to be in something that faces people because you bring great pleasure to people when you talk to them totally yeah I've never really thought about it like that that's great. Got to have a plan. That's that great. was this morning. That was this morning. Yeah. In a way, I hope she doesn't because she made quick coffee. I hope she stays there for, for a little while. But, you know, that's the reality. People can find themselves sort of, you know, and, and that might be a part-time gig for her that she does coffees on the weekend. She's very good at it and works through the week to build the nest egg up. Gotcha. And for any of our listeners out there who feel the same. It was a little general at Nuribar, by the way. Go and get a coffee. Ask for Amy. Best coffee. There you go. Right. I'd like to hear from our listeners out here. On this podcast, comment your biggest financial strength. Mm. And I'd like to see what people, people, people say. Do you know, I reckon a lot of people will go to type or go to tap away at what they are and then they'll pull back because they're scared of typing it. And I think you just take the emotional blanket off and just go for just it. Just do it. Put it down on paper. And that's really interesting to see because uh, I think you'll see a lot of commonality with people. That's right. All right, let's change gear. Let's go into the weaknesses, AB. Mm. So biggest weaknesses out there at the moment, uh, at, you know, it's particularly as we lead into Christmas, is overspending. That's a hard one. It is massive. This time of year, a lot of people are under pressure. If you have a family, yeah, and, and, and again, social media is an awful lot to answer for. That there's this expectation that the kids come down on Christmas Day, and you know there's this ocean of, of gifts underneath the Christmas tree, and it's it's a self-imposed pressure that we can put ourselves under. We're all guilty of it, especially as parents. You want to give your kids as much as you can, um, but you're not necessarily doing them any favors. And then there's also the Christmas parties and drinks after work, and all of those things can really add up. Um, and I think keeping on top of your spending through this period of time is is massively important. And I'm not talking about being Scrooge. At the same time, you can be sensible and through the year you can budget to say, okay, the budget for Christmas is X, whatever it may be. It needs to be realistic because it's not cheap out there. I had this no. conversation with my wife over the weekend. You know, we've got, you know, we, we have a, well, we've got a busy house just with uh, our kids, with five kids. Um, my father's over from the UK. Our in-laws uh, are, are there for Christmas as well. And, and so when you start catering for, you know, 11, 12 people, you know, that, that moves the needle a little bit in terms of where the budget needs to be to be able to do that. So you're not opening a can of corned beef, but you're sitting down eating what you want to eat and drinking what you want to drink and having a great time. And a lot of people leave it till Christmas to, oh, gee, we better bump the budget. But you can 
literally, you know, put 50 bucks a week across Planning the line f- throughout the year for it, for example. Gotcha. I think I saw, is it Crisco, the hamper company do that, where they put you on the never never, where you get your Christmas hamper, you pay a fortune for your interest, but save your money up a bit each week. That's and right. That's the Christmas one. And, and we know that overspending leads to consumer debt, which is arguably the biggest weakness that most people have. Terrifying, especially in a rising interest rate environment, and whether you've hit the buy now, pay later, which seems to be falling from favor. I'm very, very happy to see that personally. Um, or whether it's credit card debt. You know, you get through to January and, uh, yeah, there's a big old debt uh, oh, yeah. that needs to be sorted out there. And that doesn't set your new year up then. You think, I'm motivated, I've got my goals, I'm ready to go. And bang, you've got this awful credit card bill that you need to go and take care of. And, uh, and you know, the, the hangover of Christmas seems to last for quite some time. So do not go into debt for it. Totally. In terms of weaknesses as well, and sticking to all of this is that lack of commitment, number one, but also lack of attention to all of this because yeah. it's really easy to fall off the wagon, but also really easy just to be flimsy with this. Yeah. If, if you've got a plan, I think you know, you, you've got to be absolutely resolute in your focus on what your goal is, but you need to be very flexible to be there. We've, again, talked about that a number of times in different, uh, different podcasts that we've done. You have to commit to your plan because if you don't believe in it, nobody else will. No different to running a business. You know, we have a team meeting. This is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is why you believe in it. And everyone will come along and be dragged along for the ride. But if you're humming and harring and, oh, I don't know if I could do that or maybe I shouldn't do that, never going to happen. It just gets put in the too hard basket or the too too easy to make the easier choice of, uh, we'll pick that up again in the new year. And, and you started the new year really behind the eight ball where you don't want to be. So you've got to be very committed to where your plan is. It takes self-discipline to do that. You know, listening to all of this, it's funny because all of these weaknesses we've just listed out can all be cancelled out by strengths. If you don't have a plan, get one. Yeah. If you overspend, get a budget. I mean, it's not that, not hard. It's not rocket science, really, is it? it the, the success is world class basics across any endeavor, and it truly is. You know, you, you sort of. I, I watched. Um, I don't watch a huge amount of TV, but I did watch the documentary on Netflix about David Beckham. Oh yeah. And I was, you know, I was in the UK at the time, and I mean, Beckham was just a legend in himself in terms of his fame and and so on. And what really struck me out of all of it is just his self discipline more than anything, and just focus on the basics, like to the nth degree. Keep kicking. Whether it's cooking something on his barbecue, whether it's kicking the soccer ball around, or you know, his his presentation around branding, and uh, and for someone that wasn't particularly articulate when he's younger, his ability to really speak. And, and, and convey a message. And, it, and it, takes, it takes focus on that. It didn't happen by accident. And it's not, he wasn't selected for it. He selected himself for that. And, and that's huge. And as you say, every weakness we have, we can fix by building it as a strength. Totally. Uh, and it's done a remarkable job of that. And I, you know, so I think, you know, yeah, it's uh, stick to the basics, focus. And it's opposite sides of the coin. Your weaknesses are opposite to your strengths. And you can focus on the coin toss to make sure it keeps landing on the strength side by putting an investment into your time and energy and focus just on your strengths and building them up and up. And a good example of not doing that is, I guess, familiarity or um, being stale. Mm. Oh, I've always done this, biggest weakness. Oh, I've always done, I've always bought properties or I've always just bought blue chips or I've always done X, Y, and Z. And, and it just becomes on autopilot which if you've got a high degree of skill can be good, but sometimes you become so blind to the factors around going on in the economy or going on in the world that you, you become quite stale and out of touch with what you should be doing. Uh, and that's that's as damaging as well, big weakness that, and that's why keeping your skills sharp, that ability to read what's going on is crucial. Well, that in itself is an opportunity. So let's talk to those now, A, B, some of the ones that are available out there. Increasing your skill set means you can increase your asset base, be it cash, mm-hmm. investments into property shares. Let's talk to that right now. Exactly right. So being obsessive about budgeting uh, is a high level skill. And it's not boring and it's not basic. It is finance 101. And it's fun. Uh, and something our governments need to probably take a course on. Uh, and if you want a successful business, you have to have positive cash flows. It's as simple as that. So what do you then do with that cash flow is build your asset base up. So spend it into your first, second, third, fifth, tenth property or that portfolio of shares or ETFs or other forms of investment that are particularly suited to your needs. But it all starts with getting your budgeting sorted out and being obsessive about that and having a very, very, very high level of uh, skill there. And I think there's an opportunity in that for everyone to be obsessive about budgeting, not not about being the fun police and never doing anything of colour, 
put all the colorful stuff in your budget, just make a budget for it so you have spare cash flow always to be able to invest. And if you do that for five years, I, another conversation today, I've had a number of different people I spoke with. You've been that. around for sure. Yeah, look, I had a good chat with a buddy of mine this morning. I've spoken to him properly for probably about six or seven months, just lost his father and they, they, they own a, a, a very substantial um, transport business. And, um, and we were talking about that whole notion of years ago when we acted as each other's accountability coach. We were both getting a bit free and easy with our spending, a lot of time in the US, a lot of time at the Playboy Mansion, a lot of partying, a lot of good times. And uh, yeah, he's married and kids and married and kids, so it's all in the past now. But we talked about that year where we held each other accountable. And he, he said, I, I keep going back to it because I had as much fun with that and winning that game with myself as I've done anything. And I mean, this guy's got a mile of cash to go and squander on whatever he wants, but he doesn't because that is ingrained in his DNA insofar as I've done that with mine. And it's not about being the fun police, it's about winning the game. Totally. Another one that springs to my mind as well in the current climate rising interest rate environment, which in itself is a threat, but good opportunity to reduce your debt yeah. in that scenario. But building up debt right now is not a good idea with, with interest rates where they are for sure. Uh, and I think refinance is a huge thing. We talk a bit about this in the book. Um, you know, if, you, if you've got a, a number of different debts, credit card in particular, which typically are quite high, or maybe you've fallen into default on a buy now, pay later, or, or whatever it may be, consolidating all of that into a slightly lower level of interest payment. So let's say you take out a personal loan, which I'd never advocate, but if it means you can get all of your credit card debt cleared, and instead of it being maybe 17 or 18% you're paying per year on your credit card, you're paying it off on a personal loan at say 10% or 11%. Much better. You're saving yourself an absolute stack of interest for a start. That you've got to be disciplined. Again, to come back to that term discipline that you don't go, okay, my credit card's clear, off we go again, because you've now got a personal loan to deal with as well. Short term, you might get a bit of an impact on your credit score because there's a hard credit check that the bank will do before they give you that. Uh, but if you make your payments on time and, and, and pay that personal loan off as you've agreed to, um, long term, it will have no negative impact on, on things at all. And you've got the ability to save yourself literally thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Absolutely. Um, which, which makes perfect sense because that saving, a saving is as good as a profit. You can then start to roll that into your investing. That's right. And we talk about being committed and being yeah. attentive to your finances. And, this is and, exactly and, it, right? To, to a different extent, you know, with, with, with and I know you've done this a couple of times now with your property portfolio, um, and, and that's looking at refinancing. And, and yeah, yeah, but you're only saving you know, 0.3 by doing that. All that paper you got to do for 0.3, but if it's on, well, let's face it. If you look at the average price of property now, you got a couple of properties. There's probably two, three million bucks worth of property there. Um, 0.3 on two or three million is worth having. Absolutely, it's worth it. And the paperwork's pretty good hourly rate. And that's right. Again, you're securing a more competitive rate, which means. You're taking it's the attention to detail. You're taking care of what looks like a small thing, which over time has a, a you know a, a substantial impact on things. That's right. Pay a broker to do it for you. Best advice: just get it done. It'll yeah, pay off. Absolutely, and send him a nice bottle to say thank you um, when, when you get to the end of it. And you know, and on that note, taking that a step further is a little bit more of an advanced strategy: is debt recycling, whereby mm. if you've got person, if you've got a mortgage on your primary place of residence, you know, people go, "Well, I've got an offset account. That's all good." Get the thing paid off as quickly as you can. And if you're able to find an investment loan and you take the proceeds, the profits from your investing, it'll be very selective as to as to what kind of investments you use here. But you take the profit from your investment loan, use it to pay your mortgage down. Why? Well, your mortgage is not tax deductible debt, whereas uh, an investment loan is. So now you're starting to create some tax benefits. Um, you know, within 10, 12, 15 years, the mortgage is gone and you've replaced it with a 100% tax deductible investment loan, saving you, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in repayments on your mortgage to funnel into what you could be doing on the investing side. Again, caveat, you've got to choose your investments that you use that loan for very carefully. Um, you know, there have been some real horror stories with that. You think about Storm Financial up in Townsville, which, yeah, you know, they basically got people to remortgage out. Terrible, terrible. And that's why they got shut down. And, you know, to be fair, um, you know, they probably should be in jail for what they did too. Um, but the, the, the reality is if you're buying share investments, uh, make sure you buy that insurance policy through using the options world to protect it. So if the market collapses, then your loan is safe. That's a very high level of skill to have and important yep. if you're going to consider using debt recycling as a strategy, which you know, is it, it is a valid strategy when it's used correctly. Now, one thing you've picked up on, AB, throughout our chats here is the mention of social media, which also brings up a different conversation, which is in regards to having a side hustle. Mm. Social media, the internet, online, all that kind of stuff lends itself to having a fairly low time commitment for a decent income if you're able to generate a side hustle. 100%, and, and there's never been more opportunity out there. 
um, you've just got to find out what 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 flavor is yours basically and I mean it, yeah we've talked about this again we've talked about most things over and over and people think well is there anything new to talk about and there's always something new to talk about and that's talking about the same things in a different way until you get it and go okay I'll start doing it now that's right uh, because if the message isn't getting through we need a clearer way of doing it side hustle is great you know it could be anything from you know designing web pages for people if you're good at writing maybe search engine optimization traffic could be only fans if that's your particular jam yeah it's not for everyone please leave your kit on we don't need to see that <laughs> six pack um uh, through to you know uber through to you know pet services uh, amazon. Grooming, amazon you know babysitting trading and investing there's a myriad of stuff that you can be doing and we're all busy and people, oh, I don't, I don't have time for that. What are we busy doing? And that's why I think sometimes keeping a journal to see how you spend your time is is a useful tool because you know, physically we probably work less hours uh, than, than, than in the past, um, thanks to legislation, but we find ways of still connecting with work by checking emails out of hours and all those sorts of things. So you know, create some time and space to really consider a side hustle. What are you good at? What can you make some money with? And what do you find enjoyable is the sort of trifecta of things to, to look for. Uh, and if you can sort of drop anchor on, on something that suits all three of those boxes, that's Perfect. maybe something to start in the new year. Why have a side hustle? Because it's gonna give you extra income to then start on the investing journey if you don't have the free cash flow to do it now. Totally. And what you're doing is swapping time for dollars. Yep. Let's now finish up. Let's talk about some threats mm. in the marketplace or the economy right now. And I can almost guarantee that all of the opportunities we've spoken of can probably cancel out these threats. But let's go ahead. So higher inflation, higher interest rates at the moment, big threat. Look, it is. It's, uh, and I don't think we're done yet. A lot of people expected, well, number one, some people naively believed that we wouldn't see interest rate rates until 2024. And here we are at the top end of the cycle. They're still moving up. Um, yeah, there is a very real threat. Uh, for that, and yeah, you know, I spent a bit of time in the book talking about this. Where, when we talk about borrowing, if interest rates are below the eight-year average, you should probably factor in maybe four or five percent, uh, even six percent, on top of where they are right now. As can you still service your debt there? And if interest rates are above um, that eight-year average, maybe add two or three percent to that and see if you can still service your debt. It is a very, very real threat. Uh, because a debt becomes more expensive to service, uh, and, um, and and that, that takes it out of your pocket to do other things, including enjoying life, and not even enjoying life, buying the necessities. So very real threat, and that's a threat for everyone that's got that for sure. Uh, equally, job security, which Ooh, can sometimes go with that. You know, and in the US, we're starting to see a bit of a slowdown in the employment market, and I suspect we may well see see that here, especially if we get our one and a half million migrants that um, the Albanese government are trying to thrust on us at the moment, where there'll be more competition in the job market, and you can expect to see an uptick in, in, in unemployment on the back of it, uh, where employers try and drive costs down. You know, and this year, we've been to a lot of regional areas. Um, you know, there was one particular city we went to where um, yeah, they've got a meatworks there and they've got imported labor on four, five, seven visas, $1,000 a week less in labor fees per person. Uh, great for the business, not great for the local community. So job security is a, 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 real, a real threat. Uh, I, and I guess we're on the subject of threats, assets dropping in value, whether it be yeah. property, um, whether it be the stock matter. market or anything. Yeah, uh, and, and that is a risk for everybody once again. Um, Again, if you've built the skills uh, and, uh, and business plan up to be able to deal with it, these become less of a threat because you've got an emergency fund or you've got a plan B income or a side hustle or, or understand how to manage your investments more effectively and it diminishes the risk you know, accordingly. Absolutely. Mm. And it's funny you say that because almost every threat that we've spoken of thus far lies either with a strength or an opportunity. So there's always going to be threats, but the more opportunities you identify, the more strengths you have, the less of a consideration they are, right? It's exactly right. It's, 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 it's not that hard, but it's easier to do nothing than it is to do something. It takes courage to step out of your comfort zone, to learn new things, to put yourself out there, to give it a go. And, you know, strengths and weaknesses are opposite side of the coin. Opportunities and threats are opposite sides of the coin. And if you can take care of the strengths and opportunities, be aware of the other side of it, that's what you're doing is mitigating the risks from those things. But by taking the time to learn or earn or, or put into practice this sort of stuff, the threats diminish. Yes, there's always market risks, there's a force majeure, you know, things could kick off in the Middle East, whatever it might be. There's always going to be some level of risk there, but the better prepared you are for it, the less negative impact that's going to have on you. Absolutely. So for anyone listening to this, AB, we've just done a pretty in-depth SWOT analysis on, on some general stuff. What can our listeners be doing now in order to ensure they've got more strengths and opportunities and less weaknesses and threats? 
Well, I think if you take a review of what you've done for the year or even the last decade in some instances uh, and evaluate it through these lenses and start to look where the threats or weaknesses sit with what you've done and go, well, okay, if I want to fix that, what would be the fix for it? Is it learning more? Is it saving more? Is it... um, you know, acquiring some skills, learning how to use insurance in the stock market, whatever it might be. And that's going to give you some hardcore goals to then set yourself for the year ahead to say, okay, I've got these weaknesses and these threats hovering over what I'm doing today. But if I take these steps, uh, you know, to learn more or to be better at saving or sticking with my budget, whatever it might be, that will largely fix those steps. That's progress. Absolutely. But you've got to identify them. And if you're trying to do this all in one go, motivated, goal setting, pumped up for the year, without really taking time to reflect and you know, scratch the surface a little bit as to where you are on the journey and why you're there. Because we're all where we're at for a simple reason, and it's a byproduct of the decisions that we've made in our life to this point in time. You know, that's where anyone is right now, is because of the decisions they've made up until this point in time in their life. And if you start to make different types of decisions, maybe better quality decisions, it's going to radically move the position you're finding yourself in. Absolutely. AB, really well said on that. Thank you very much. And hopefully our listeners have found plenty of value on this. As I say, comment your biggest strengths. We want to hear it. Sounds like a plan. Thanks very much, Mitch. There you have it, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification button. And we'll look forward to hosting you next week.